Hello everyone, today we have this endgame puzzle here. The study was composed by Katznelson, a composer which I personally don't know, but um, yeah, it's a nice study anyway. So please go ahead and pause the video and try to solve it on your own. Otherwise, I'm now going to walk you through the solution. So um, white is essentially upper rook and black's entire counterplay is based on the a3 pawn, which only needs two more moves to promote. And so the first task for, for white is to stop the promotion of the pawn. And uh, yeah, we could, for example, play rook to h8, and after a2, we can stop the pawn with rook to h1, but black is um, in time to activate his king. And I think here we have two options. We can either take the pawn here when um, black will be in time to play king to b2 and um, white would be very lucky to even make a draw here. And we can also play rook to a1 immediately here, but also in this line, um, white is not going to win the game. So um, rook to h8 is maybe making a draw, but it's not winning. And um, we could also try to take the pawn on e3. So on the one hand, targeting the a3 pawn immediately, and if it pushes forward, we go behind the pawn, and we would pick up the a2 pawn. But obviously black is going to play king to b4. And in this position, white doesn't have, yeah, doesn't have a way to improve the position so much. Um, black will probably advance a2 on the next move, and there is not so much we can do about it. Um, yeah, if we give a check here, the black king is just moving forward. And if we try to bring our own king, there is a2, rook to e1, and king to a3. And um, yeah, also in this position, um, black is not going to lose. So, <clears throat> what else could we try? Well, maybe we could try to give a check, either here or here. But um, in either case, black just plays king to b4, and um, yeah, this is an improvement of the black's king position. So both checks are kind of dumb. So um, I'm going to show the winning move. Congratulations if you found rook to e4. So we're trying to put the rook behind the pawn like this. Um, black can't play a2, because then we just go behind the pawn, and we're going to pick it up. And the obvious move is king to b4. And here white has the very nice move c4 check. Um, black will go forward with his king and will push c5. And this position black would play king to b3 probably. And we take the e3 pawn now with check. And um, yeah, now you can see in comparison to taking the pawn on e3 in one go. We've now managed to advance at least our c pawn to c5. And after this check, black is going to play king to b2, keeping the pawn defended while, um, yeah, obviously not blockading it. And in this position, white has to move king to d3, so bringing the king closer while keeping both the second and the first rank open for checks. Black plays a2, and we give a check. King to b2, and we give another check. And here, at the first glance, it seems like white has only a perpetual check. I mean, we can um, always go to e2 and e1, but how are we actually going to make any progress? So maybe here is a good moment to pause the video again and try to find the next move for white. And it's a fantastic move, rook to a1. So um, we're kind of baiting the black king to take the, the rook. And then we're going to um, yeah trap the king in the corner. And um, yeah, in this position, black will play probably a4. It's the only move, because if you advance the d-pawn, we're just going to take it. So black plays a4. Um, yeah, white can't move his pawn. So he needs to play rook king to c1, keeping the black king trapped like this. And here um, black is in Zugzwang. He The a pawn can no longer move. 
so he has to play the d-pawn and if we now take the pawn like this um, it's a stalemate so instead of taking the pawn we have to push c6 and it turns out in this position we can take the pawn black can um, move his king out of the corner we make a queen but the moment that black makes a queen he's getting checkmated because he has the pawn on a3 if there was no pawn on a3 he would make a draw but with the pawn um, he's losing the game um, maybe one other line should be discussed because in this position black doesn't have to take the rook immediately he can also try to play a4 first and the thing is having played the rook to a1 we don't want to move it away now and uh, we can't push the pawn so the only thing that's left is king to d2 and now yeah black has um, the option to either play a3 or to take here and um, both lines will be kind of similar to to the line that we've previously seen but um, here in this position at least um, there is one last accuracy required of white because if we would play a king to c2 this would be only a draw black is not going to play a3 this would be a transposition to what we've seen but instead he plays d5 in this position if we take he plays for a stalemating trick and if we advance here then black is also going to advance and um, in this case you can see that the pawn is not on a3 but on a4 so queen to c2 in this position is not um, not checkmate so this is maybe a nice trick that black could try and um, this is the reason why after king takes a1 we have to play the precise move which is not king to c2 but king to c1 and then um, only now we go to c2 and it's essentially the same that we've seen before we get a checkmate here yeah um, i hope you liked the video if you liked it feel free to subscribe and i hope to see you in the next video